Hey guys, so uh, last video I posted, I mentioned that uh, if anybody out there was having any trouble getting their tracks approved by Audio Jungle, I would gladly listen to them and uh, and offer some feedback or some advice on how to make it better. Uh, hopefully next time and you know next time you submit it, it would it would get approved. Now, like I mentioned before, uh, Audio Jungle, this is a common problem. You know that you send your tracks to them and they just they send you back an email and it's just like a copy paste email and says no this isn't up to our quality standards and they don't tell you why so um anyway fortunately somebody reached out to me and they sent me a track of theirs that had recently been rejected by audio jungle um this gentleman's name is fabian he's a um he's a composer he lives in france and uh super nice guy i actually got a chance to speak with him over the phone briefly and uh so thank you fabian for sending me this track um i'm gonna put a link to his website in the description below. You can check out his music. He's got a bunch of tracks on Artlist right now. Um, really cool stuff. It's kind of like cinematic ambient electronic music. Uh, it's really cool. Now, um, it's funny because when I was listening to this track that he sent me, the, the first thing I thought was, well, if this song is great. It just needs um, some work with a mix. So wouldn't it be great if I can get this guy to, to stem out this track for me? I can load it into into Logic on my end and I can make a tutorial about how I would, uh, you know, change this mix and um, and that's what that's what I did. So I'm gonna, you know, also throw in some extra elements to, you know, really make it like pop. And um, I'm really stoked about this. It, you know, it only took me about like half an hour. And uh, and I hope you find this helpful. Now, before I dive in, I'm gonna mention that I'm gonna try to stick to um, using as many stock plugins as I can. I'm also going to try to just use the uh, Contact Factory library. And now, especially for the strings, because you know I understand that uh, there's a lot of producers out there who um, you know, either can't afford the expensive sample libraries uh, that are out there, or they're just maybe at a point where they're not willing to invest like thousands of dollars. Um, anyway, the point of this video is that um, is that I wanted to be able to show you that you don't need a ton of expensive software or plugins to get good results. Um, and uh, also, I'm going to mention that um, I'm going to add in some like some some like cinematic hits and like effects like risers and like downers and um, and, and that kind of stuff and like sub hits and I got these from a free pack that you can download through Audio Imperia's website um, by a producer named Jennerton and he's got like he does like amazing cinematic uh, stuff so anyway he's got a free pack on that website you can download no strings attached it's and it's great so I use that for this tutorial as well um, okay now if you found this helpful please uh, give it a like uh, please subscribe to the channel uh, I'd be happy to hear from you um, to let me know how I did on the comments below I hope you found this uh, useful and uh, without any further ado, here we go. Enjoy. Okay, guys. So I've imported the stems uh, into Logic here, and I've color coded everything and organized it all. And uh, we're just going to take a quick listen to the first fifteen or twenty seconds of this song. Uh, I'm not going to listen to the whole song right away. If you do want to hear the whole song right now, then you can skip to the uh, the time code that's posted on the bottom of the screen there, and in that section of the video that is going to be where I'm going to compare the original mix to my mix. So you can skip ahead and watch that now if you want, or um, you can just go from here. Uh, so let's just listen in. Okay, so a bunch of things jump out at me right away. First of all, um, I feel like that there's some muddiness or some maybe some the chords aren't sitting with me quite right in uh, in the string section here. So let's just solo these for a second. The violins don't sound too bad. So I think first of all, what we're going to do is clean up this uh, this these cello staccatos. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my contact player. I'm going to use the factory library and uh, just use the stock cello ensemble, um, and I'm going to recreate what he's done here. Okay, so this is sort of my recreation of what of the chords that he's using. Skip ahead here. So 
I feel like we can make some improvements here. Um, let's just take a look at this and you'll see that I've got quite a bit going on here, probably just too much. I think that when you're in the lower registers, when you're using cellos, um, it's important to know that the third of the chord is going to diminish the power of it a little bit. So, um, you know, I think that, that the root and the fifth and maybe just like an octave above it is going to be enough for, uh, for the cello. So let's do a little bit of cleaning up here. We'll take this out. Take these out. Then he's got the wrong root note here on the last chord. It's a G, I think. He's playing a D on the bottom. So I'm going to take that out, get rid of our third. Let's just see how this sounds. Okay, a lot cleaner. Now, another thing I'm going to do to add a little bit more interest to this, because it sounds a little mechanical right now, um, is I'm going to add some velocity uh, differences and in, in, uh, I'm going to make it sound like it's you know a little bit more human. So that's what I have in mind here. So we'll bring these up here. Okay, let's just see how this first section sounds. That sounds a little nicer. Let's bring this whole thing up. Okay, better. And you know what I'll do is I'll just actually copy and paste that first section uh, into all of them. Okay, let's hear it since now. Okay, good. Our cello sound a lot cleaner. So I'm just going to copy and paste this into the sections that he has playing here, just real quick, and then we'll move on. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at these violin staccatos. Now they don't sound too bad, um, but what I'm going to do is just really easy. I'm going to do the exact same thing I did with the cellos. Essentially, I'm going to just open up a, a contact instrument here. And we're going to load up the factory library. Like I said, I'm going to try to use stock stuff for all, for this whole thing. Um, where is it? So let's bring up our violin ensemble. And we're going to put staccato as our, our articulation. And what I'm going to try to do actually is just literally copy and paste the cello And we're going to see how this sounds. Probably won't sound too good right off the bat. Um, I don't hear anything because they're all too low. Okay, so now here's where we can add in some... Uh, some thirds into our chord. So Which sounds pretty good. Not too bad. Let's see how it sounds with the cellos. Okay, well, that sounds a lot better sonically, but I feel like 
uh, the, the violins can be doing something a little bit more interesting uh, rather than just being playing like the, the pulsing chords. So why don't we try um, something like this. We'll just copy and paste this instrument and uh, we'll just kind of hash this out. I want to do kind of like an arpeggiated vibe on this. We'll keep it kind of on the lower register for now. So I'm just going to improvise this. Tell I'm not a piano player. Gonna worry about the mistakes for now. I'm just gonna quantize that for a second. Just gonna quantize all these, and I think I screwed something up here. It's probably that little guy right there. Just have to listen to this one more time. Okay, not bad. So I'll just write in uh, violin arp. Island staccatos. And let's kind of keep these as they are for now. Um, and let's move on to something else. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna look at look at here is the string, the, the string pads. So let's listen to this just for a second. Okay, again, so we have a problem with the last chord, the voicing isn't isn't right. Um, so let's just fix this probably. I, again, I just loaded up uh, the orchestral ensemble um, from the Contact Factory Library, and I'm just going to draw these chords in real quick. So let's punch it in here. All right, now let's just make sure these are all glued together. Pull it up here and fix things up a little bit. Let's listen to just what we we did. Okay, um, I'm gonna extend that just a bit. And I think we have the same problem. I say I'm gonna get rid of this chord or this note. Let's see how that sounds. thing I'm going to do here is uh, I just want it to sound like it's breathing and I'm going to add a little bit of dynamics into this make it just a bit more interesting you could do this with the mod wheel too in most sample libraries but I don't think the contact library responds to the my, my mod wheel for some reason so I'm just going to draw this in and I'm going to give it a little bit of life here Let's see how this sounds. Oops. Okay, stop doing that. There we go. Excellent. Okay, let's move on. Okay, let's look at this bass for a second. 
How does it sound? Okay, in my opinion, this synth bass is just not adding anything to the track. Um, I think it being kind of like an orchestral epic sort of tune, I feel like uh, if we just put in, uh, you know, an orchestral type bass in there it would just suit the track a little bit better. I just don't think this is adding any excitement to it at all. So um, I'm going to just delete this altogether. And um, I loaded up a double bass solo track here from the factory library. And uh, we're just going to I'm just going to play the root notes here in, in a staccato style. So let's uh, solo our cellos here and go for it. It's that easy. I'm just going to quantize that and check, make sure it sounds okay. The first note is not on the grid for some reason. Oh, didn't quantize properly. Good enough. Okay, next thing we're going to look at is the percussion. Sounds cool. I think we could just kind of boost the highs a little bit and maybe roll off a bit of the, uh, the lows, a bit muffled. That sounds a bit better. I'm going to add in just a tiny bit of excitement on the top end too, just to make it kind of stick through a little bit more. Just a little bit. Good. Okay, let's just leave it at that for now. All right, let's listen to this piano for a sec. First of all, I'm going to bust these into an aux channel here, and let's call this piano. And I'm going to break my rule here. I'm going to use a Fab Filter EQ to uh, do some more precision editing or uh, precision EQing on this because I feel like I might need something a little bit more precise. <laughs> And I feel 
like there's a bad cut in here somewhere. Um, let's maybe try to fix that. So that gets rid of the pop. There's probably a few of those in here, so I'll probably have to go and clean it up just a little bit, and then we can move on to the next thing. Okay, let's listen to this legato violin part here. It's this nice melody that's playing over sort of like the most climactic part of the song. The problem I have with it is that just on its own, it's a little bit weak. So what I did was I added, added a couple more elements to it just to thicken it out and give it a bit more power. So I added in a violin, a French horn section, and a brass section. And uh, together, they alone sound something like this. see that in the track it just makes a huge difference it makes it stand out a lot more it gives it a lot more power so we'll mute these this is what it sounds like without it To give it an extra little boost, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just bust these and call this, uh, let's say, call it melody. I'm going to add a little saturation to this with the inflator. Sounds nice for now. Okay, so now that I've kind of done a once over on this track and I've looked at all the elements, I've um, I've organized it a little bit better and I've bust all these um, these separate you know these different elements into their own sub auxiliary channels. So uh, as you can see here, I have one for piano, choir, melody, drums, pads, and strings, and I brought all the levels of these um, aux tracks down a little bit uh, to give myself plenty of headroom in the stereo channel um, because as I add processing like as I add compression as I add saturation to these to these tracks it's going to push up the gain so I'm just trying to manage my gain a little bit better at this point and um, another thing that I'm looking at here is uh, he's actually uh, got like quite a bit of like uh, like a sort of percussive um, embellishments here. So we've got like impact hits and downers and, and risers and stuff, which is awesome. Except for, to be honest, they just don't sound very good to me. Um, I don't know what samples he used, but I'm just not a huge fan. They just don't sound um, that great. They don't sound terrible. It just doesn't fit the track for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete these um, and yeah, I'm just going to bring my own samples into this and, um, and we'll see how it goes from there. Okay, so I've basically fleshed out the percussion a lot. The percussion, percussion track he sent me initially, uh, it sounds okay. I've done some EQing to it. it. sounds a lot better, but it just still sounds really, you know, weak. It needs a lot of work. It just doesn't have a lot of 
depth. So what I've done is I've added uh, one of my favorites. This is a uh, Heaviosity's Ensemble Drums. It sounds great. It's very, very powerful, very sort of smacky. And then I've also added in uh, my uh, Damage Armageddon Ensemble kit, which is doing some s simple snare hits and then some like wood rim hits. Together, it sounds pretty good now. So on top of that, I've added some simple cymbal swells to come in with this intro or this this first part of the song here. It just kind of sounds like this. And to balance everything out, I've added in a sub hit too. Um, I've put these in sparingly. Uh, they're, it's subtle in the mix, but it adds a lot of uh, depth and power to it. Check it out. Okay, so on its own, it just sounds like this deep hit. Okay, so that covers just sort of the intro into the song. Now, when we come into the first chorus, um, I basically have things repeating, like I have the cymbal swell as well. Um, I have a sub hit coming in, and then I've also added in my Ava Instinct hits. Um, Ava's awesome. They make great stuff. It's all really affordable. Now, these hits on their own, they sound kind of mechanical, and like they don't really have like the round robin thing going on. So if you listen to it, uh, they sound a little weird on their own. But if you add that in... Uh, if you add the level in like uh, subtly to to the track, then it actually all comes together. Sounds like really really powerful. I just have it low in the mix, so it's not too crazy. Okay, so now things are sounding awesome, and I also have uh, several different risers, which I've thrown in um, specifically at the end of this chorus, just to to transition out of it. Um, so I got like two risers here, and then I'm also using Contact's Rise Hit uh, library, which kind of sounds like this. It kind of has like a drum flam thing going on, so all together these sound like this. This just really adds a ton of power to this end of the chorus section here. Okay, so as you can see, these are all kind of spread throughout. Um, I mean, there's a lot of layers here, right? I mean, and that's what it, it takes to sort of make it sound interesting. And, you know, the more you kind of just copy and paste and reuse the same samples and the same hits, it just it's just going to sound stagnant. The ear wants to hear that variety. It wants to hear um, that depth and, and that the change. Or also, it gets, you know, you get bored very easily. So you got to add, I mean, this is, this is you know, relatively uh, simple. I didn't want to spend forever on, on this video um, going down the rabbit hole with all the different samples. But if I was doing my own track, then, you know, this would, this would look uh, quite basic. Uh, so this is just a very simple approach just showing you um, that I'm using a, a variety of different samples, different, different uh, drum libraries to, uh, you know, just to give it some spice. <clears throat> now, on top of that, I should also mention that I went down to our violin arpeggios here. And what I did is in the second half of this chorus, I uh, see if I bring these up here, I doubled the last half and I put it up uh, with an octave higher. And this just adds an extra bit of push and power to the last section of the chorus, which also is uh, highlighting our, our melody and it comes in and you'll, you'll hear it and it just adds uh, a lot of power to the whole thing. Okay, so it's all sounding quite epic now. And, um, like I said earlier, I have everything bust down into uh, auxiliary tracks. 
Uh, everything's kind of nice and organized. I got still have a lot of headroom in the stereo out. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through these and add a little bit of EQ and maybe uh, a bit of compression and uh, some saturation. And um, and we'll see where we're at after that's done. And then we'll add, you know, we'll do a tiny bit of mastering on the stereo channel and then we'll be finished. OK, so I'm going to fast forward right now and uh, I'm just going to go through these and uh, kind of inspect them one by one. OK, so I didn't add a lot to um, our aux tracks. I just did some basic EQing, and um, most importantly, on these strings and and the and the string pads, I've just gotten rid of all this low end information that doesn't need to be there, um, and it just helps clear things up a lot. Uh, especially with the pads, there's adding a lot of muddiness to the low ends. All this stuff, you know, below 50 hertz just doesn't need to be there. Um, okay, so other than that, I just really didn't do much. Everything sounded pretty okay, so you know, I just kind of left it as it is. Now, let's talk about our stereo track here. This uh, is, you know, um, basically I, I could have added a lot more, but I just wanted to simplify things here. I started off with uh, just killing the everything below, you know, basically 15 hertz um, right off the top. Then I added in uh, an SSL compressor, um, and this is just doing like two, three decibels of compression on on the master track here. Uh, the attack is slow because I want those transients to to, to pop through, um, and the release is fairly slow too. And uh, yeah, it sounds like you know a, a lot nicer. It just adds like a, a nice bit of glue to the track. <laughs> And then last but not least is the Ozone um, mastering uh, plugin, which is just so awesome. I mean, I'm not a mastering expert. Uh, they they just make great stuff, um, and I usually just choose a preset and then I kind of I kind of tweak from there. And in this case, I've um, let's bring this up. In this case, I have a I think I just have like it on the Brighton uh, overall mix preset, and I just kind of left it as that because it sounds pretty good now. Just a ton of extra power and and you know it just sounds really epic now. Um, and if you listen, you know, to the original uh, original mix of the song, I mean, it's just the difference is night and day now, basically. <laughs> So he's got the uh, the audio jungle watermark in this in this master um, uh, in this mix that he sent me. Uh, like I said, it was uh, an audio jungle submission, and um, it was rejected. And um, I feel like if he had um, something that sounded a little bit more like this, then maybe it would have gone through. Who knew? Who knows? Like hopefully he'll resubmit it, and um, we'll see what happens. But uh, this is where we're at now. I mean, this is this is the original. <laughs> This is where we're at now. So as you can see, it just has like a lot of depth. It has a lot of clarity. The um, it just kind of just has a lot of you know epic power behind it now. And uh, I think that's a wrap for this for this tutorial. I I feel like uh, it's gone on long enough. And um, hopefully I've I've made my point here. You know, just adding a lot of layers. Um, just getting a little bit more creative with you know with your melody and 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 adding in a, a variety of different samples just adds you know a, a ton of flavor to the track now um i think i'm what i'm going to do just to cap this video off is to just play the um the original mix and uh, my mix side by side and you guys can hear the difference um hope this video has been helpful for you i uh I've enjoyed making it. It's taken me a little bit longer than I thought it would. Uh, hopefully, it hasn't gone on too long. Uh, if you if you dug this, please you know give it a give the video a like. Uh, please subscribe and um, yeah, hope to see you next time. Audio jungle.